Good afternoon, everyone. It is 4 p.m. on Tuesday, May 10th. I know that you're not hearing this live, so that might not be so relevant to you. My name is Benny Krause. This is the fourth episode of SAR's podcast, Opening Up. Um, we are trying to open up about uh, how we do things here at SAR and have interesting conversations, hopefully, about education, about um, the way our institutions run, uh, about some of the challenges and some of the opportunities. We spent some time talking to Marissa Richter in our first episode about teaching Hanukkah, feels like a long time ago. We talked to some of our uh, medical um, advisors who have been amazing over the last couple of years about the vaccine for children. That was a couple of months ago. Last episode feels like it was um, connected to this one, then I'll explain how. We met, we spoke with Jack Bentheim, who's the president of SAR, who our guest knows well. Uh, it was around the time that we had released tuition, tuition around February time, we released tuition for the, um, for the coming year. And we talked about the challenges around tuition and the, it got a little bit of a perspective historically uh, about how tuition has changed and how tuition support and the values around Jewish day school education for all, um, et cetera. And one of the things that we mentioned in that episode was that um, there aren't that many levers, so to speak, to work with when you're trying to figure out the question of day school affordability. Um, there are expenses and revenues like in any business or in any, or any charity. Um, there, there's the expense side, there's the revenue side. On the expense side, it's overwhelmingly um, in something like a school, it's overwhelmingly personnel. Um, and then other things, whether there's pl the plant um, <clears throat> or the food service program here or technology, there are there's certainly other significant expenses, but for the most part, um, about 80% of our expenses go towards, um, towards personnel. Um, so if you would want to change something by reducing expenses, you need to think about what the, op what the possibilities for that would be. Um, and we obviously, it's our job to be responsible and efficient, et cetera. Um, and on the revenue side, um, it's basically tuition and fundraising. Um, but the truth is, and I think I mentioned this last time, um, there is another lever. Um, and that lever has, been, has become much more significant over the last 10 years. And it's really due uh, to a group of people. Uh, and, and the leader of that, of that project is our guest today, Maury Litwack. Um, and that lever is government funding. Um, you know, I think if you would have said 20 years ago, I'll, I'll give you my background a little bit. Before I came to SAR, I was in, I was in Europe. I was working for a Jewish foundation. We were building Jewish schools in Eastern and Central Europe. Um, and when you build a private school in, in Eastern Europe um, or in Germany, not the, the countries are different, but uh, you, you build a private school in Germany, it was our responsibility because it was a private school to pay for the Jewish studies, right? The government wasn't paying for the Jewish studies, but 87% of the secular studies were funded by the state. That's a private school. Um, so we needed to get the school opened. We needed to find the building. We needed to actually run the school for a few years to show that it could be a viable school. But after that, um, we were responsible for the Judaic studies and 13% or something like that of the secular education. Coming back to, coming back to America, um, that was I mean, it's nothing close to that. Um, there's a separation of church and state, which we will talk about um, here. And the separation of church and state really meant that if you have a private school, if you want to start a private school, you're basically on your own. Um, and a bunch of years ago, um, a group of people came together to say, we need to figure out, or we'd like to figure out whether there's, there's a way to move that lever a little bit. I mean, there was always, I think, um, some money coming in from, from government sources uh, for, for little things. And we could talk about what those were. Um, but that has really changed over the last bunch of years. So, so what, what I'd like to do over the next uh, maybe 20, 25 minutes or so um, is, to, is to talk to Maury about the work that he's done. I want to say that, you know, there are lots of organizations out there. Um, what you have done, Maury, with, as the Director of State Political Affairs for the Orthodox Union Advocacy Center, um, and the work that you do, um, not only in New York, by the way, because it started with Teach New York State, but now it's apparently Teach New Jersey, Florida, Maryland, Pennsylvania, and beyond, and you'll talk about that, um, has really made a difference. Um, and it's made a difference in a rel relatively short time. Uh, you know, normally government and gov government does function slowly, but you've actually taught me personally, and you've taught the people, uh, other colleagues and lay leaders, um, that if we can organize well, um, establish the right connections, push for the things that we think 
make sense um, and be strategic about it and be organized about it, we can actually move that needle. And you've done a wonderful job. And I, I feel honored to uh, to have uh, gotten to know you over, over the years. Um, as you've been doing this work, you are now also an SAR parent, um, an SAR high school parent. So I, I hope that that's been a good experience for you as well. But it's really great to have you this afternoon, Maury. Thank you for taking the time. Um, and I'll allow you to correct anything I just said in terms of your introduction, and then we'll go right into the uh, into the work that you're doing. Well, clearly, the only reason I've been so successful at lobbying and, and so uh, impactful in getting money to SAR is so that as an SAR parent, I'm not asked to volunteer or sit on any boards or anything else like that. So I'm hoping that if I produce enough money, you know, from a government side of things, that that's my that's uh, that fulfills my obligation as a, an SAR, a, SAR parent. That's really, you know, what this has been all about all along. You keep doing your thing and, uh, and we'll make sure that you have the time to do it. Uh... <laughs> it it's, it's, been a, it's been an absolute pleasure. And I mean, I think when you look at this work, um, many people who are listening to this for the very first time, their immediate reaction is going to be, uh, I think, one of two things. It's either going to be, oh, I'm opposed to that because I don't, I don't, you know, I've always sort of heard that that's, you know, bad for the public schools or that's uh, not something that's, uh, um, you know, a violation of church and state, or you're going to hear have 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 listeners who say, "I love that." You know, how do you get vouchers tomorrow, and how do you get as much money as possible? Who's stopping us, or you know, the, are the teachers union a problem, or who's a problem, etc. And I think both of the reason why Teach NYS has been so successful is thanks to really two things. Number one is challenging those traditional uh, conventions and ideas, uh, and really um, turning them on their head. And the second thing is involving um, the Rabbi Krauses of the world, the uh, Jack Benheims of the world, and others who were so instrumental in starting and founding this organization with other schools um, in, in, in a real grassroots movement where the parental voices and the educator voices and the leadership voices of the schools are, are heard for the very first time. And I think when you when you look at the conventions, it's 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 we're, we've we've literally never been in a battle with the teachers union because the teachers union does not view this as taking away money money from their schools. We've we, we've um, we've been successful in this work because it's not a violation of church and state. So we've always done things uh, in in guidance with our our lawyers and in in a way that that um, that that is based on established court precedent, uh, which we're very very proud of. And um, and I think the reason why we've had such success is just because there's a, an old uh, adage in politics, which is that if you're not at the political table, you're on the menu. And we think that historically speaking, um, you sh you know uh, most yeshiva and day schools were were just on the menu, where issues that obviously a politician wanted to support, whether it was funding for security or funding for um, nursing or things like that, um, they just didn't. They they gave the money to some other cause. Maybe it was you know, casino interested in New York State or something else like that, simply because they didn't know that we cared so much about this. So one just real quick example of that is, is those who may be opposed to this or those who may say, well, you know, where are we going to find the money for it? I'm for this. Or how are you going to do this? You just you have to understand that the money is out there or the, the support is out there. It's just maybe going somewhere else. So, for example, four hundred and fifty million dollars this year will flow to Hollywood and, and, and television tax credits. And that's far surpa surpasses anything that we're currently getting for our um, 300,000, um, uh, I'm sorry, 400,000 non-public school kids in New York state. Well, let's get to some of these numbers. Cause I think that for, you know, for you, it's, you know, it, you, you dream about them as the back of your, the back of your hand and, you know, but I, I'd like, I'd like people to understand let's, let's take me back 10 years, 12 years, 15 years. Um, what was a school like SAR, a private Jewish day school in New York, in New York? We'll, we'll go, we'll go outside of New York soon, but what, what kind of support were we getting? Um, or a school like us what, what was getting for, from from the state or from any kind of any kind of government support? I, I think there's there's two ways to measure that. Number one is you measure it by the buckets of aid, and the other is you can measure it per pupil funding. And I think the buckets of aid uh, were primarily for um, probably two to three buckets of aid. One was for uh, if a school took the regents or took uh, attendance and things like that. That was one bucket of aid which was um, despite the fact that the state said, hey, here's a bucket of aid we can give you, it was historically uh, underpaid. Uh, and the second way you can measure it is, um, is through the per pupil allotment, which was um, uh, under $100 a child in, in, in funding at the time. And so since that, in that decade plus, uh, we've increased the buckets of aid. So we, we, now there's a bucket of aid for security funding. Now there's a bucket of aid for uh, uh, nursing health funding. Now there's a bucket of aid, uh, there was a bucket of aid for uh, technology funding. 
And now there's a bucket of aid um, that we're very proud of for STEM funding and for, for injecting more funding into our STEM schools as well. And those things add up to um, not, not under $100 a kid, but hundreds of dollars a kid, um, you know, nearing, nearing closer to uh, $1,000 or more for, for, for a number of schools as well, depending on if they're taking advantage of everything. So I think those are the two ways that we measure the funding. Um, and that's the way that elected officials measure it as well, which is, you know, what are we getting? What, what are we seeing? So when an elected official, and I think, you know, more than a dozen have visited the school in Rebbe Krauss and parents from SAR over the, the, the decade, they're literally every year they go. I, I think let's say this tour with Rebbe Krauss used to be about two to two to four minutes at most of him showing what the government was providing. And now it could be a 30 to 40 minute tour where he's showing them everything that the government's doing uh, for the school. So I think that's how you could really measure this. So uh, let's talk about the process, because I remember, again, I, I can't figure, I can't tell you if it was seven or 10 years ago, but it wasn't, it, it, it wasn't so many years ago. All you, I know, you, all I know you is- You took we, a bunch of us into a room and you, and you said, if we would go for STEM funding, you know, and we, we kind of shot a whole bunch of questions at you, right? Because this is a question as to, you know, if, if, we, if we start getting funding for science teachers and math teachers, does that mean that they're, you know, that the state just sends us teachers from the public school system? We don't, we lose our autonomy in terms of choosing it. Tell us about how you, how you kind of developed this, because this is, this is huge and it's, it's something that's going to grow. And, and, and also, you know, while you're doing that, tell us the numbers, how much STEM funding is coming in. What do you hope for this year? I know the state budget is, you know, is, is very hot right now. So tell us specifically about that process and about some of those numbers. Well, first of all, I would be remiss if I didn't thank um, Jack Benheim and Robert Krauss for the early involvement of this. Uh, and um, he wouldn't like it if I named him, but I'm going to name him anyway, him anyway, Abe Eisenstadt also. I'm assuming Abe doesn't listen to the podcast, so I won't get in trouble. Um, so the, the, I thank those three people who were very instrumental when this was a school of, um, when there were six schools involved, SR was the first, um, school, the not shown involved in this when they were, you know, uh, uh, when it was only one or two lay leaders who cared about this, you know, it was people like Jack and Abe who were stepping forward and saying, you know, we, we, we believe in this. And it was people like Rabbi Krauss, uh, really one of the earliest, uh, educators involved in this who said, let's, 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 let's give this a chance. We, we, let's see what happens. And so the vision of STEM funding is very simple, which is, I think, um, um, again, as I mentioned previously, there's people who are uneducated on these issues and are going to say, well, you know, get vouchers or bust. And, and fortunately, vouchers is just just almost a, uh, a four letter word for most most politicians. They don't want to hear just just writing checks uh, to people in the state. They want to hear how you're using the money, what you're doing with the money. And so that's just not a sustainable or, or, or tenable solution. The way we came about with STEM funding was is that if you look at the New York City um, technology sector, um, and this was six to seven years ago, if you remember, Robert Krauss, when you look at the six, that, that technology sector, we literally had studies from technology companies showing that they, they couldn't attract the tech worker. They couldn't attract, the, attract those who were pursuing STEM subjects. And so when we brought this news to the city and state, they were very concerned about it. And we said, we just don't understand why you're leaving out um, this population of 400,000 kids, um, you know, Jewish, Catholic, Islamic school kids from this important industry, from this important sector. And when the politicians heard that, that's when they were believed in supporting the STEM funding. And obviously, there's a lot of work. You know, we went from bringing um, uh, two dozen parents and educators to Albany to bringing thousands to Albany. Uh, so there was a lot more work and muscle that was put into this in terms of us just just flexing our, our vocal muscles and saying, hey, we got to really get out there and speak up for this. But this was a, a concerted effort to solve a problem. And I think when po in politics, um, it's very easy to sit there and say, I, 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 we, we, we deserve, deserve, deserve. And it's much more difficult to come up with compromise and figure out ways to say, hey, this helps the state and this helps us as well. And we think with STEM, we came up with that solution. And so the STEM funding started in 2017 um, at $5 million. This year in 2022, uh, the program was passed at $58 million. We believe that to fully fund the STEM program, it costs probably about 85 to $90 million. And we think it's very possible that's paid for next year. Uh, but we believe also there's other aspects of STEM, Rabbi Krauss, including reading and arts and things like that. Um, physical education is now considered a very important part of STEM as well. Um, so if the state uh, wants to invest in these kids, they got to invest in STEM. So part of the part of what you're working on now is expanding the the definition of what STEM is in terms of in terms of what we reimbursed. Is that is correct? That what you're correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we 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 think we we think that there there's there the the program has been such a smashing success. I mean, I I challenge anyone to see a program that grows in government. 
from a $5 million program to a $58 million program in five years. It's just completely unprecedented to have that kind of growth for the program. It's because our educators are the best. I mean, I'm not sure if you're aware of this or not, Rabbi Krauss, but the educators in the in the yeshiva and day school system are literally the hardest working people people uh, I know. So this is the, the, they're the best. And when politicians see them and elected officials see them, they're very, very impressed and they want to invest in that. That's, I mean, that's great to hear. I'm happy that's your experience as a parent. It's certainly my experience uh, here. And I think it's important to, to recognize that the, uh, when a person goes I, into I'm not sure. are teaching. You, are, you, are you still an educator? I, I look to give you only now as a podcaster. I think of you as a, as a celebrity. Thanks, so I, I know in yes. the past you were an educator. I don't know if you're still educated. I just think that's why I came on the show. I would never, for just regular, for educator Rabbi Krauss, I'm not sure I would have, but celebrity Rabbi Krauss, I'm on board. This viral podcast uh, is not enough for me to for me to retire yet. So we're going to, we're going to, I'll, I'll keep my day job and, uh, and do this for fun after four o'clock. Um, so $58 million is, is STEM funding. I know that at SAR, we're getting what they call CAP, the mandated services, some of those things that you referred to before, just basically, and this is this 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 is older, although the, the funding levels have changed, right? Per pupil based on the, you know, taking attendance, giving tests, things like that, that, you know, that have been fought for in the past. Um, I know that some of our districts are getting um, busing. Some do and some don't because they come from New Rochelle. Certain ages are getting busing. Riverdale is locally getting busing. It really depends on, um, and it was interesting, you know, a bunch of years ago, actually, there was a question about New Rochelle, the New Rochelle local budget was considering taking it out. They saw what a big number it was. And actually the community really appropriately, I think, organized to make sure um, that that didn't happen and they and they were successful. Um, you know, one thing I learned from you, Ari, is, you know, uh, 10 years ago, you would have asked me the names of my city council person or state senator. I, you know, I wouldn't have known. And, and, and we've learned that, that these relationships are meaningful and, and important. Again, like not 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 just about taking and you know it's it's really about building relationships and and hopefully making sure that we're giving to the community around us as well. Uh, what would you want our listeners to uh, to know about that in terms of involvement with local civic stuff? I think it's important for people to appreciate that there's opportunities in in public service and that's there's an opportunity obviously when it comes to uh, your shul when an opportunity when it comes to your school there's an opportunity when it comes to giving back to the community. Um, but there's also an opportunity in civics and and you representing your community and saying, here's issues that we care about. And how are the um, you know, how do you as an elected official think about this? You showing up in City Hall, you showing up in Albany, you writing your elected officials. These things are very, very important. It's, it's just absolutely critical. Um, you know, Teddy, Teddy Roosevelt referred to it as um, being in the arena, you know, really being in the arena and, and being involved. And uh, politicians subsequent to President Roosevelt have used the the in the arena um, uh, analogy very often because you're at least there you're 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 part of something. So so our our recommendation would be um, to learn who represents you, learn about the issues that you care about, and and start to speak out about them. Just start by asking the question to your elected officials. What do you think about this or that? I mean, and it doesn't have to be the issues that we're talking about on this podcast. It could be something else that you care greatly about. Could be the streets. Could be people are speeding. Could be, uh, you know, your your recycling or your garbage pickup. Who knows what it may be? So um, I, I think it's really important for people to understand that politics matters. Um, so many amazing things have happened in the history of the Jewish people because people spoke up and people stood up. Um, and I think that that's just a lesson people. This is not something to be outsourced. Your vote matters. Your voice matters. Um, so uh, you really have to take this very, very seriously. 92% um, uh, of education funding comes from local and state government. You got to know who these people are and you got to be, be active and engaged. And, you know, those who vote, those who show up really have a voice. What's up next? I, I, it sounds like, you, you know, you said that expanding STEM, are there other kind of big items on your on your wish list or on your advocacy list things that you think will will matter to to our school to other schools um that are that are realistic and achievable yeah so two things number one is is that uh, one of the things we worked on for some time on the dc side of things is trying to make the um our our uh the two, the religious part of the tuition tax deductible and seeing whether or not there's some way to do that to actually allow for for this very large portion to be tax deductible because you're not necessarily getting a service from that as you would be getting from a, the the a require uh, from be, be from getting an educational degree. Um, so that's that's something we've long looked at nationally. Whether that's something federally we can do, which I think would be a big relief for parents across the board. Um, and the other thing piece of things which I know a lot of SAR parents care greatly about 
is um, energy efficiency and seeing if we can improve our um, the ability to um, reduce our carbon footprint, um, which is something that nonprofits definitely desperately need help with and something that was passed in Congress. Uh, and we were trying to see on the state level as well if we can make improvements there as well. So, you know, there's the physical infrastructure from safety, that guard in front, but there's also the the uh, the aging infrastructure that so many schools have and, and things that they need that uh, can not only improve the facility component of the school, but also can, can actually make the world a better place. So that's something that we're looking at as well. Um, I got to tell you, though, that when, again, when I say show up, be involved. If you listen to this podcast and you want to you want to um, uh, be involved, I mean, you, you can reach out to me and and you can reach out to my team. I can tell you, though, that everything we talk about, if it excites you and you say, wow, I'd love to get my, you know, this portion of the tuition uh, tax deductible. I'd love to have more STEM funding or STEM teachers in our schools. Or I'd love to have more guards or I'd love to have more energy efficiency. This is all possible. It's just it's just a question of how much your political weight you apply to something and how much your involvement is. And you know, this could happen in by 2040 or 2060, or it could happen by 2025 or 2024. It really depends on the listeners and it depends on the parents stepping up and showing that they are a voice that can't be ignored. I'll never forget, and I think, I don't know if you remember this, Robert Krauss, going to Albany and seeing our, you know, small group of a couple dozen people and then seeing um, animal rights activists in the hundreds or the plumbers union in the thousands. I mean, it just, I do remember that I went with Abe and it was, it was my first trip in this context to Albany. And it was like, wow, you have, you have to show up exactly as you said, you have to be there. Um, and, and these are important relationships to, uh, so, so it sounds like you're not going to just do it for us. We have to, we have to do some work on our own. Yeah. It's just, it's just that style of politics and sort of just relying and outsourcing it is long, long dead. Like you gotta be active. You gotta be involved. And, um, you know, it's not just it's just not it's not not just talking to your 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 small circle on social media or yeah. or on at Shabbat meal. It's really getting out there and making your voice heard. What's with the state budget? What are we up to? The state budget uh, this year will be close to four hundred million dollars in funding for non-public schools. What's the whole state budget? Whole state budget is a lot more. I think That's it's a hundred billion. Okay, and you know, uh, uh, sorry, I'm I'm throwing questions at you that you might not have the numbers for. I guess I mean, so I'll, just, I'll just I'll just for, I'll just make up make, I'll, I'll just make them up if we need to. No, no <laughs> big deal. No big um, deal. As a percentage of the uh, of you know of the education budget, it's obviously a, a small number. Most yeah, we 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 look. We say non-public schools are about sixteen to seventeen percent of the population receive less than two percent of the funding. That's okay, how we that's do it. That's important to know. Okay, yeah. that's important to know. And it sounds like the the model. I, I know that the, every state is different, and so you've you've created these um, structures in. Did I get it right? New Jersey, Florida, Maryland, Pennsylvania. Yes. Yeah, so if you're a listener and you have a, a, a relative or you have a grandchild in Florida, there is a Teach Florida. If you have one in New Jersey, there's a Teach NJ. In Pennsylvania, there's Teach PA. In Maryland, there's Teach Maryland. And even in California, there's Teach California. So we are advocating in 90% of the yeshiva and day school population in the country in those six states. I guess the question, the, the question that needs to be asked is really, I have to ask myself, or maybe I, I really need to explain. I think some of the, you know, sometimes when we send out some of these, you know, emails about the achievements of, of Teach New York State and some of the, you know, the, the, the funding that, that is, that is passed, uh, the question is, well, tuition is still a lot. Um, and you know, more, maybe you could help me out a little bit, but I do think it's obviously a question that goes, that goes back to us. Um, if we're getting outside funding that we weren't getting in the past, um, you know, this is not completely cracking the nut of, of the expense of a Jewish private day school education. And I think that it's important to recognize that to be true. I think it's also important to, for us to, to be accountable for the fact that if we are, if we are getting outside funding, we need to make sure, um, that our, that our parents, that our families are, 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 are seeing that. And I think that, you know, um, one thing that we try to do, our finance committee really works hard at this, is to make sure that tuition increases um, are modest. So, so it's true we haven't seen too many zero tuition increase years, and we we haven't seen any um, tuition decreases because the bottom line is that expenses are still going up, uh, going up, inflation is still there, the needs are still there, the physical plant. Um, but it, it 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 is true that um, that this funding has slowed that down, and this funding has also allowed us to do things um, that would otherwise somehow you know end up going back to as sort of a tax on the community, whether it's in their capital campaign or maintenance or things like that. So, it, you know, I think I think 
it's important for us, um, you know, to 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 be, take responsibility for the fact that if the if the funding is coming in, that it's being spent efficiently. Um, and I think it's a question that, that is asked. So I do think that you know, in in the case of SAR, we've really tried to be responsible with that and try to keep the tuition increases modest, and and teach New York State and the stuff that you've done has has allowed us to do that. Uh, but it is a question that I know that you know you get asked when you try to to raise awareness or raise money for your for your work. And I think it's a, it's a legitimate question. I don't know if you have anything to add to that. On your well, the, look, I mean, the viewers can't see my haircut. This is like a maybe a twelve, thirteen dollar haircut. So it's not money not going to me. The the money, the money, um, which is very important. This money is, is everything is done in context, right? So uh, in and I believe the SAR report it shows the exact amount of money. The SAR report is very very transparent, and it shows that. And I think it's it's anywhere from six to eight percent is what the government funding is um, for SAR. That's what the number is. So I always like to throw that number out, out wherever school I'm talking to, because specifically um, it it uh, it's important to understand as a parent that if that number were to go away, if we weren't if if Rabbi Krauss didn't go to Albany six times a year and 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 the handful of people we have in the SR community doing that, then literally tuition could go up six to seven percent or more. Uh, and in, in in it's important also to understand uh, the the flip side of it is okay maybe tuition would go up six seven percent or more maybe maybe this the STEM lab wouldn't look the way it is or maybe the security wouldn't look the way it is or other things like that and so I just think it's important for people to understand that that's part A part B Rabbit Cross is, is even more important is that we agree that six percent of government funding isn't enough the average New York City school is spending twenty six to twenty eight thousand dollars per child twenty six to twenty eight thousand dollars per child. It is amazing that our tuition is what is at SAR, considering that for the product we get, considering the fact that that's what the, the, the per public school popu uh, population cost is. If you as a parent say, you know what, I don't think we deserve 6 to 7%, I think we deserve that 16, 18, 20% that we are as a population, then you must make your voice heard. Right now, the elected officials are often laughing at us because they know we don't vote in the numbers we could. They know we don't show up in Albany or City Hall. They know that we don't care about these issues as much as we claim we do because they see you once every three years or four years or five years. So I think there's two components to this. One is appreciating the fact that the money is having an impact. And the second piece of it is that there's way more money that we can go after and more resources we can go after the community, but we need the community to view these issues um, uh, with, with a level of seriousness um, that that is regular contact communication with your elected officials, not outsourcing this to a few people who you know like politics in your community. Politics cannot be ignored, Rabbi Krauss. It absolutely can't be ignored. For the issues our community cares about, we cannot ignore politics. Okay, Thank, thanks for that passionate plea. I think that again, I, I'll, I'll end with where, where we started. Hakarat Hatov to to you, to the people around you. Uh, you know, I, I try to be responsive when we get emails from you and from your office, whether whether it's to bring a, uh, an elected official in to visit or something else that you need, or even coming to our dinner to uh, to raise awareness. And those, you know, we, we we see ourselves as partners. You're 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 doing amazing work, and we are deeply grateful to that for that. Maury Litwack, thank you for all that you do. Thanks for being an SAR parent. Um, and thanks for taking the time to talk with us. Thank you, afternoon. Rabbi. Have a good one. Take care.